This year, Living Oceans did two expeditions to clean up marine debris on the northwest coast of Vancouver Island. In mid-August, we went back to places that we'd cleaned last year. We had left those beaches absolutely cleared, and this year when we went back, there was another ton of debris on each of them, so three tons that we brought in just from that area alone. When we cleaned Sea Otter, Lowry, and Sanjo Bay in 2014, about one-third of the debris that we picked up bore manufacture marks from Japan. This year when we went back, almost everything we picked up was of Japanese origin. It was really quite striking, the difference. We've been hearing from kayakers and campers who've been out this summer that the beaches are in worse shape than they've ever seen them before. We did something a little different this year with the volunteer recruitment. We, we opened it up to all of our supporters, to anyone who actually wanted to come and spend a week in the wilderness and, and collect plastic. This year we decided to expand the scope of our operations and go out to the Scott Islands as well. Lands and Cox Island is a provincial park as well as being part of the Scott Islands National Marine Wildlife Area. It provides really important bird habitat and there are upwelling currents there in the water that provide nutrients for just an abundance of sea life. The reason we do marine debris cleanup is that these plastics, if they're left on the beaches, they're not just an eyesore. They're also going to pose a real hazard to wildlife. They break down with the action of the sun and the waves on them, and they break into such tiny particles you can't even pick them up. At that point, they're liable to get into the food chain, and we've, we've seen some good science being done recently by the Vancouver Aquarium in particular, proving that microscopic particles of plastic are already being taken up in the food chain by plankton. And you know that when the plastics are getting into the plankton, they're getting into everything that eats plankton. We heard from our pilot from last year, uh, Catherine Weeks, that the closer of the two Scott Island group, as in Cox Islands, were absolutely choked with marine debris. So we landed crews of four to five people on each of three beaches and started cleaning up frantically. We had only a few hours to work there uh, while the tide was out. So between the 17 of us who went out that day, we managed to pick up about three tons of debris. It was really quite amazing. And the pilot came and started lifting our debris out. And when he came back the second or the third time, I think, he came back without his hook on and we knew there was something wrong and the weather was closing in really fast. So he had to make a really quick judgment call as to how we were going to end this day. And his call was get the people out and get them safely home and leave the bags for later. Unfortunately, that meant neither of the other two teams had had time to uh, secure their bags to shore properly. So we were worried that the next really high tide would just float them out and they would become obstacles themselves to navigation or animals could become entangled in the ropes that were holding the bags together. And then I put out an urgent appeal for funding and I was so pleased by the response, it was overwhelming. We were able to get flying again on Saturday, the 19th of September. It was a poor day with a, a high ceiling but pouring rain, so all of us in our rain gear went off to rescue the bundles from uh, Lowry Bay and one that was remaining at Sea Otter Cove. We managed to get those in uh, handily, but it was so foggy we couldn't even see um, Cox Island that day, so we went back to base and decided to wait for a better day. Against all predictions, the Sunday dawned with a promise of clearing weather, so we made plans to get out to Cox Island on Sunday afternoon. There's probably 10 tons left out there to get. The Marine Debris Program is, is a new one for us, and it, it has been difficult to fund, but it takes an awful lot of staff time to put something like this together, and that's where our supporters have been just critical to the success of this project. And I'd really like to thank everyone who gave their time or their money to make Clear the Coast a success. We are definitely going to do this again next year. <laughs>